All right, man. I think we are live. Jordan Crooks, how you doing, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You must be coming off a massive high right now. Feels pretty good. It's great to be of all. <laughs> it is great to be of all. Uh, you, the men finished second, correct? Yes, we did. We tied with Alabama for second. Wow. Congratulations. That's a Thank huge you. effort. Really Thank big you. effort. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Were you guys expecting that? before secs or was this a surprise to you as well we we were just trying to do the best we could because we knew that we had a super strong men's team going in and we definitely had a chance of finishing on the podium and the goal was just to be better than last year which last year we got third last year got third okay so it's a nice little crawl up the ladder and then where did you finish in ncaa's last year i'm not 100 percent sure i'm just a freshman so i i wasn't there <laughs> That's good, man. Who cares? You know, it's all about this year, right? That's awesome. Well, listen, man, this is about you. I mean, you have taken the world by surprise. I didn't know who you were before this. So congratulations on the team that recruited you, first of all, to get you. And then uh, to be doing what you're doing. Um, outstanding work, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Now, is I mean, again, is this a surprise to you? Do, Tell me your best times in the 50 and the 100 before this weekend, and then what did you end up this weekend? So my best time in the 50 was 19.3, and my best time in the 100 was 42.3. 19.3, and then you end up going, what, 18? 18.5. 18.5. Mm -hmm. Damn! <laughs> what a drop. And then and then in the 100, you said you were, what, 40? 42.3. 42.3, and you went down to 41.4, didn't you? Yes, on the last relay. Dude, massive drops. <laughs> massive drops. That's Thank insane. You. Um, who, who's your primary coach at Tennessee? Uh, my primary coaches are Rich Murphy and Josh Huge. Well, good for them, man. They're doing outstanding work. And then got to give some props to Matt Credich. Honestly, I'll yeah. tell you a little story. I was just laying in bed about an hour ago. I was texting back and forward with your coach just talking about you and how impressed I was. And then next minute I'm like, Hey, can you give me a contact number for him? And then I'm talking to you. And then next minute I text back to him and tell him we're going live. And so it's like, it's all happened in the last hour. So um, awesome. I love that to death. Uh, just oh, one of the definitely. best coaches in college for sure. Definitely. He's awesome. Yeah. So, all right, then those are the drops. Let, let's just go back a second. So you're from Cayman Islands. Yes, I am. Um, Tell me, how did you kind of get into swimming? Um, I guess, I mean, coming from an island, I, a lot of most people learn at an early age. So I was in the water, I'd say probably about four, but I didn't join a team until I was about 10 mm -hmm. um, and started competing like for the national team at 11. And why did you particularly start with swimming? Was, it, was there a natural um, gift? Did you have, was there something going on? I think um, a lot of a lot of people back home just like to ensure that their kids know how to swim because we're surrounded by water. And mm -hmm. I mean, most people love the beach back home, so almost everyone knows how to swim. So, wow, that's awesome, man! And then, um, did you have any kind of heroes growing up in swimming? Was there any role models for you that you particularly paid attention to? Um, definitely. Well, not. He's not old, but definitely Caleb Dressel. Like, as of late, I always thought he was super cool. Um, and, you know, the past couple of years, he has kind of been like my idol. I was, always wanted to I, – I wanted to be able to swim like him one day. We all want to swim like Caleb Dressel, man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you're getting real close. Actually, not even close. I mean, you're faster than him as a freshman. You just recorded the fastest freshman 100 freestyle time in history, right? I believe so, yes. <laughs> I mean, so there's going to be kids that want to grow up to be Jordan Crooks soon, man. They're going to look at you. They're going to be talking about you. This is this is a whole new revolution here. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. It's, thank you. Now, what are, and aren't the Fraser brothers from Cayman Islands? Yes, they are, Sean and Brett. Great and guys, too. They were, um, they were definitely role models growing up. They really set the standard and put yeah. the island on the map. Absolutely, man. Sensational swimmers. So, mm -hmm. okay, Caleb Dressel's at Florida. The, the Fraser brothers were at Florida. Mm-hmm. You kind of grow up idolizing these guys. How do you end up at Tennessee? So I was here for the TYR meet about a year ago, and I just ended up running into Coach Josh, and we kind of hit it off, talked for a bit, 
And then I decided to take a gap year, but throughout that gap year, I stayed in contact with him, kept training, racing, and then just decided to commit. I, I really loved what the program had to offer and what I saw on social media, online, and just how upfront and honest they were. So that's kind of what drew me to Tennessee. Had you swum yards before then? Because uh, in the Cayman, you swim short course meters, don't you? So, yes, back home in short course meters. So I'd, I'd never swam yards before coming here. So in terms of the recruiting process, okay, it's one thing to be interested in them. How were they interested in you? Were you swimming decent times at that point? At that point, yes. I was I was at the TIR series. I was trying to get a B cut for the last Olympics. And so that's how that's how I ended up at the TIR series because I needed a FINA qualifying meet. Mm-hmm. And then I just ran into them and the rest is history. <laughs> Wow. So, I mean, there's definitely some talent identification there as well. So congrats to them to to see the talent. I mean, I don't think anyone would have expected somebody to come in freshman year, go from 19-3 to 18-5. That's pretty <laughs> ridiculous. But so, so there's obviously a, an incredible amount of talent there. Um, Thank you. you know, what about this? How, how did your parents feel about you kind of um, selecting Tennessee, maybe moving to America, that sort of thing? Um, they were really happy with it. Um, they've always supported my swimming, and I think they were really happy with the school choice. They, they kind of felt like it was the right, the right decision. Um, I think this was probably the best school I could have picked. <laughs> so well, really there's no doubt about it, man. You, you're, you're fitting in really well, and you're doing some outstanding things. Um, okay, let, let's go to the performances then. So from what I could tell from the video – you are very good underwater. Has that been something that's always been good for you or has that been developed in the last 12 months? Um, I, I've tried to work on it. Um, I think it's definitely it's definitely been a work in progress. I wasn't always great at it, but um, I'm definitely still trying to get better. And I think it's, I think my strength in sprinting, I'm a little bit better underwater than I am on the surface, so. And freshman year is kind of a, a shock to a lot of people. I mean, it's a, it's a learning experience. Usually you come in and you're doing things completely different, and it usually takes a bit of time to kind of make those adjustments. It seems like you've adjusted quickly and effectively. So uh, t- talk to me about things that kind of just were completely different for you initially and um, some of the things that you feel like are really working for you right now. Um, well, coming in, uh, I was definitely a little bit nervous. Uh, I'd never really been on a team like this before, but it was a great experience. I mean, the team was really welcoming. They made me feel right at home, and it wasn't hard to get comfortable. They made everything super easy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in terms of the things that you're doing differently or maybe some of the things that you've really connected with, I mean, you, you look, you're dropping massive time, and like I said, there's obviously talent. There. There's a lot of hard work, and there's, and there's a lot of figuring out what you're doing. So, in terms of just the the day to day stuff, what's the stuff that's really connecting with you to help you make those massive time drops? I think the coach's perspective on training has really helped. They make a really big emphasis on quality over quantity, and mm-hmm. I think the training we do is really specific to what we're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. and the coaches do a really good job of setting us up to do what we'd like to what we'd like to do in, ter- in uh, terms of progressing in the sport right it's very difficult sometimes in a college scenario where you've got um, a range of people a range of athletes right and and for you to get the specific work that you need um, at the level that you need it can be challenging within within a larger group so Talk to me about your weekly structure. What, is, what does the week look like for you in terms of who you're with, the movements you make, the type of sets you're doing each day kind of thing? So usually we'd, um, we'd swim twice on – or I swim twice on Mondays. I'd swim once on Tuesdays, twice on Wednesdays – or sorry, once on Wednesdays, mm-hmm. once on Thursdays, twice on Fridays, and twice on, on – sorry, once on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. And I'd lift once on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And – that schedule has been working out great. Uh, t- Mondays are usually longer, like 200 pace stuff. And then the rest of the week is more sprint focus. Mm-hmm. Um, some Wednesdays we'll do test sets. Um, those can change uh, depending on where we are in the season. 
and Saturdays are usually race days. We'll sometimes suit up and just mm. get off the blocks and go fast. When well, I've got a lot of questions there, so mm. let's just start with the, the last one. So when did the race preparation type work start on Saturdays where you're suiting up? Did that happen early in the season or was that kind of later towards SECs? So Saturdays have all, were always kind of like race race days. Um, as we got closer to the meet, like the last few weeks coming in, uh, I'd say maybe about a month going into the meet, we started suiting up and then just kind of getting mentally prepared to go fast. Right, right. Okay, another question I had then. So you, you mentioned 200 work on Monday afternoons. Mm -hmm. Is the 200 something you're training for? You didn't, you didn't swim a 200 this week, did you? No, but the 200 something I'd like to get better at this a little bit more comfortable with. And so those are the uh, Mondays are when I train with Coach Rich and he does a really good job of getting us more comfortable. So I mean, the 200, whether it's breaststroke, butterfly, freestyle. You swam the 100 butterfly at SECs? Yes, I did. And what was it? 45 something? 45.4, I believe. 45.4. OK, so you're 18. 18.5 in the 50, you're 45.4 in the 100 fly, you're a 41.4 in the 100 free. Why do you want to get more comfortable in the 200 free, man? Who cares? <laughs> I think uh, the 200 free, it, it's definitely a really cool event, and I'd definitely like to be more comfortable with it just to have a shot on the 4x200 relay. I think I got you, man. Cool. I got you. I'm only messing. I'm messing. It's, uh, people would die for that 18.5 speed, man. You've got it. So don't lose it. But um, all right, once a week's fair enough. Once a week. No more. Okay, Rich. No more than once a week. <laughs> that's, I'm kidding. Um, well, that's awesome. And then you you mentioned gym. So you're in the gym three times a week. Have Had you done gym before you got to Tennessee? I did a little bit, but it was kind of on my own, so it wasn't super structured, and I wasn't doing it as often as three times a week. It was kind of just whenever I got to it. So this is this has definitely been a change up here, and Greg, our uh, guy who oversees our whole gym workouts, he's done a really good job of helping me get more comfortable in the gym and just get better overall. Right. Now... <clears throat> In the gym itself, have you gained a lot of strength? Have you put on muscle? Uh, what, what's been the changes for you in the last six months? I think I've definitely gotten stronger. Um, I feel like I feel the same, but uh, I think I've definitely gotten stronger and I can kind of feel it in my races. I'm not, you know, dying as hard. I can kind of go out a bit harder. And I think that's due to Greg kind of setting us up in lift to do specific things. So like the sprinters will do more power based lift, whereas the distance swimmers may do like a circuit. Right. Right. Have you felt like you put on a lot of muscle? Uh, I, I would like to think so. <laughs> I've, I've gained about five pounds. I'd like to think it's muscle. <laughs> that Tennessee food, man. It's good. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, it's muscle for sure. Definitely. Um, one of the things I noticed about you, and, I, and I'm noticing it now too, as I speak to you, is you, you're very um, controlled. I mean, it, you you seem to be somebody that is very level. Uh, and I don't know if if that's you all the time, but mm -hmm. I noticed it on the video itself. So when you're walking out, when you're in lane four at your home meet as a freshman, all the pressure's on you. It seemed like you were very relaxed in that moment. D did you notice that in yourself? Were you in a kind of a relaxed state? I guess I was I was re as relaxed as I could be. I mean, I'm always a little bit nervous before races, but this mean I, try I had to just tell myself that I've done the work. There's no more training that can be done, and I just had to trust the process. And knowing that we have the whole team there um, cheering and that, you know, this is an effort for the team just made it a lot easier and took a lot of the stress off. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, listen. Between 19.3 and 18.5 is light years in terms of how you feel and maybe even the way that you're swimming it. So did you notice that you were swimming faster than you've ever swam maybe the first time? What, what did you swim in the prelims of the, of the 50? I was 18.8 in the prelims. 18.8. So at that point, did you feel like, wow, I'm feeling incredible in the water right now? To be honest, I, I don't really remember that much of the race I just knew that I wanted to I really wanted to win it and so I just put my head down and did what I had to do and 
it didn't really feel super different from the morning, but I mean, all my fifties usually feel the same. It's just splash and dash. Well, when you, when you say you wanted to win it, um, did you have a ballpark in mind of maybe, you know, I'm going to have to swim this time to win it, or I'm going to have to beat this person or, you know, what, what's going through your head in terms of trying to get that outcome you wanted? Definitely going into the meet, I knew I wanted to be under 19. And after prelims, like I, I saw that it was possible. And then in finals, I said, you know, I've already, I've been under 19. I've, you know, accomplished what I set out to do, but so I just wanted to have fun with it and see how much faster it could be. And thankfully it turned out well. Yeah. Turned out, turned out real well. What's your race strategy in your 50? Let's talk about your 50 first. What's your race plan? What's your race strategy? So for the 50, it's, it's, it's just really as hard as you can go. There's, you just gotta, well, I personally try to kick to 50 and off both walls and just put my head down, no breath. And that's the best way to do it, I think. Well, listen, I disagree with you there. Okay. I'm going to disagree with you. It's not as hard as you can go because you're not trying to, you're not trying to snatch the water. You're not trying Mm -hmm. to pull at the water. You're trying to caress and feel and hold water as even as a 50 freestyler. I know Mm -hmm. this, you know this. So it's, it's not a matter of just pulling as hard as you can. There's obviously force and effort, but there's also a relaxation to it, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I so think, tell me um, about that. Talk to me about that. I think just I, there's def. It's really it's real a really short race, so there's not a whole lot of time to think. Mm-hmm. But in that short amount of time, I think just thinking about get hitting the turn, hitting the underwater, is everything as perfect as it can be. I think my main thing is hitting both breakouts as powerful as I can, and just being able to launch forward and get that little boost definitely helps. When, when you talk about your breakout specifically, um, tell me what you're trying to achieve there um, because there's there's mistakes you can make in a breakout, but mm-hmm. it sounds like you're obviously trying to achieve something. What is it? I think break when I, when I break out in the 50, I try to really throw my top arm. So that's usually my left arm, my breakout arm, as far forward as possible as kind of like a, like a slingshot to mm-hmm. get that mm-hmm. little boost off the underwaters. And what about your body position in the 50 itself? What are you trying to achieve with that? I used to swim kind of flat and it wasn't as effective. Uh, Lately, I've been trying to rotate more and get on my side. And it's definitely made a difference because I can grab more water and be able to pull a lot more. Right. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I've never seen you swim before. So I'd like to see the difference between what you look like and what you look like now, because you're obviously grabbing tons of water. Um, in terms of power uh, sessions, resistance work, what's the type of stuff that you're doing to increase your power in the pool? Uh, at gym, we do a lot of deadlift. We do hang cleans. We'll do squats. And I don't go super heavy. I just do weight that's you know manageable for me. And Greg does a Greg does a really good job of you know making suggestions. You know, change this, change that, depending on how or feeling what meets coming up like say we have a dual meet coming up we may be able to lift straight through it whereas this meet we obviously didn't lift super heavy going into it but a lot of the lifts are uh very explosive so we'll do um i can't remember what they're called but they're uh uh, these jumps with the cores that just Mm -hmm. work on a really being explosive off the blocks we'll do kind of simulated starts on land Mm-hmm. And so for sprint group, it's really all about power and explosiveness. Mm-hmm. And what about in the pool? What are the type of things you're, you're doing in the pool to build, build that? So for explosiveness, we do a lot of start work with cords, just resisted starts and assisted starts as well. Just being able to feel what a powerful start feels like. And it's, it's been really helpful. I think I've seen some video of the assisted work. I never actually did it myself, but what they're doing is they're putting a cord around you wait, wait is the cord come over your back or underneath your stomach so for an assisted start it's the you have the belt on and two cords are attached one goes to the left one goes to the right and some two guys will be out in the middle of the pool holding them and you'll just do a start as normal but you feel a lot faster and you'll feel like a lot of power and the challenge is just to keep tone in the body and be able to enter and hold the same line right okay do you get to pick the guys that are out in the middle of the pool <laughs> 
I, I'd like to. Uh, usually, you pick guys that can at least hold the weight. Someone's letting go of that thing, man. There's <laughs> trouble. <laughs> that that's a good drill for sure. But you need people that, that you can matters. trust yeah. <laughs> out in the middle. Um, what about uh, power towers, power racks, mm-hmm. um, shoots? We do, uh, um, we do a lot of powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a lot of towers um, and racks as well, and a lot of stuff with shoots. Um, Josh does a really good job of incorporating shoots, towers, and the uh, racks into a lot of the sprint sets. And we'll do a lot of kick with them as well. When you're using the shoot, are you using fins and paddles or just paddles or nothing? Usually it's just fins. And I mean, sometimes we'll do it without fins, but usually it's with fins. And most of the time that I use a shoot, it's kick and it's underwater kick. Okay, so give me an example of like an underwater kick shoot set. So we have a set that's uh, 425s, kick on the back, fly kick with the shootout, and then the second round would be three with the shootout, and then one underwater, and then two, two, and then three, one, and then four underwater. So that's and, really, and I, I'm, it's all fast? It's all, um, it's descend one to four each round. And how far are you kicking with that? The whole 25. Are you going 25s? Okay. And then do you transfer? Do you take the shoot off and do some transfer work? So in the on the kick on the surface, the shoot is out, but on the kick underwater, the shoot is tucked. So you don't get resistance underwater, but the whole time you're on the surface, it's it's out. And so it's, oh. it makes the underwaters a lot more challenging because you're tired going into it. And as you get further in the set, there are more underwaters and less on the surface. I get you. I get you. That makes sense. All right. I, um, I'm understanding now. Cool. Uh, has that been the biggest advance for you in your underwater kick, you think, some of that resistance work? I think it's definitely helped because it, it was definitely a challenge uh, starting off with the shoot, but it's definitely helped, I think, build power and endurance and being able to just finish off the set and make all 425s underwater. All right. Now talk to me about your 100. What's your race strategy in your 100 freestyle? For the 100 free, I try to swim it like a 50, take it out really hard, and just survive the second half. Um, usually that third 25, I try to push the hardest because I find that that's where the third 25 is what really makes or breaks the 100. That's where a lot of people either fall off or they make that final push. And so that's just been my strategy for as long as I can remember. Actually, you know what? That's actually a perfect strategy. It's a, It's the one that I learned over time and it's the one that i tell all my athletes is go out extremely fast you got to be out fast that first 50 <clears throat> but the third 25 is where you break people and you're going to drop people so it's pretty incredible that you have adopted that as a freshman most people can't come to terms with the fact that they have to go out super fast was there somebody that helped you with that strategy or it's always been something that you figured out i think when i looked at time like what times i wanted to go and i realized that the best way to do it and the only way that I could come up with was to just go out faster. And I knew it was going to hurt, but it'd be worth it. And it just worked out. And see, that's interesting too. A lot of people your age or in your situation have no clue of times. They don't look at times necessarily. And you know, how fast do I have to go out? How fast do I have to come home? A lot of times when I ask freshmen kind of um, what their strategy will be. They, they have no real idea of, of the plan or the, the execution or the, the need in order to, to get out fast because they haven't done the math in their head. It sounds like you study the sport. I try. I try my best. Um, I try to keep it simple and I just try to do what I know will work and not reinvent the wheel. Just do what it what it takes to get to exactly where i'm trying to get right okay and then what about a breathing pattern in the hundred what's yours the breathing pattern i usually try to do two on the first 25 uh two to three on the second 25 the third 25 can kind of vary because sometimes i'll not really gallop but it's more of a open stroke it's not as more it's not as sprinter stroke as the first half and then that fourth 25 is, I guess, maybe two off the turn. And then I just put my head down and Tennessee finish. Tennessee finish? What's yeah. this? That's a term we use. It's just that last 15 meters is head down as hard as you can go. No breath. 
Oh, Matt, we're not allowed to breathe the last 15. Okay. I like that. A Tennessee finish. Beautiful. Now, tell me this. Um, is there a difference in your technique between the 50 and the 100? Uh, definitely. The 50, my stroke is definitely a lot faster. And I'm obviously not breathing. The 100, I try to open it up a bit more and catch catch more water. So it's, actually, it's a little bit slower. The stroke is a little bit slower, but I think it's more effective for the hundred because I it'd be a lot harder to keep such a high stroke rate and be effective. I'd start to slip and it'd be a lot harder to finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Are you better at pull or kick? Kick. Kick. Okay. How come you didn't take part in the 50 kick challenge that was happening? I wanted to, but I, I saw a lot of, I saw some crazy times. I figured I'd let that one slide. Yeah, you can throw it down, Jordan. Come on, man. You it was know, pretty it. cool to see, though. It was. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Luke Miller from NC State, actually, he just, I think he won the the two hundred at um, ACC, so that was pretty cool. But, oh, well, what's the? Um, did you fully taper and shave for this one? Yes, we did. We fully tapered and shaved, and this was the. Uh, first meet really that I'd felt as good as I felt. Um, usually in the past, like, you know, back home, I never really fully tapered. I just kind of trained through because I felt like I'd get out of shape really quickly. But I think the training up here has definitely changed the way that I swim. And so this taper and shave worked perfectly for me and I, I wouldn't have changed it. Listen, man, how do we go faster now then? Are you you got your sights set on NCAAs. You're going to be one of the top guys. I mean, if if not, yeah, you, you'll, be, you'll be top three uh, for sure and probably both those events uh, uh, going in. So how do, how do we get faster? Just got to get back to process and continue to improve. There's always stuff to work on. Um, no race is perfect. So I've been watching film with Coach Rich and Coach Josh and – just finding little things to tweak, whether it's like, you know, a better breakout or not breathing off a wall. There's always something to fix. Just a little side note, too. I coached at Auburn with Coach Rich. He's a phenomenal oh. coach. Awesome. Uh, outstanding. Um, so you got you got some good coaches around you, man. Good people to listen to. Definitely. Um, well, you, you kind of have the three, you know, the three coaches that you talk about. Is there is there one particular one that you go to for the – the race strat, like the final comments or anything like that? Is there one person? Um, probably Josh. Uh, he's he's kind of the one that recruited me. Right. And so I, I talked to him a lot. Uh, it's kind of, I would say, 50-50 between Rich and Josh. Right, right. Um, now, what about the women, man? They just won the, their second SEC title. It's they awesome. seem to have a pretty um, killer team as well. Definitely. Lady Vols, are, they have a lot of depth, especially the freshman girls. Um, it was really cool to see him this year. Is this something you think they could take a run at the at the national championship? Definitely. I think they're a team to be feared. Okay. I like that, man. I like that. Well, listen, I said I was going to keep you 30 minutes. We're coming up on that right now. Um, what else you want to share with us that we don't know about you? Uh, not much of a simple man. <laughs> simple man. I like that. It's one of my favorite songs, <laughs> Leonard Skinner, Simple Man. Um, now, what are you studying? Uh, my study? major is mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. So you're smart as well. Damn you, man. You can't be fast and smart and good looking and everything. You can't have everything, all right? <laughs> all right. I'll take it. That's good stuff. Um, listen, man, this, this Caleb Dressel record, this 50 free record, 17, 6 or some nonsense. I mean, you're, you're creeping up on that. Is 17 a reality for you, you think? I think it's doable one day. Um, it's going to take a lot of work and time, but I think it's doable and it's definitely, definitely a goal of mine. It is. Okay, good. I want to see it, man. Cause I was actually standing on the deck watching that 17, six. And I just, I, I was like stunned. I'd never seen anything like it was perfection, but mm -hmm. the thing about it is once you've seen it once, you know, it's possible. So is that a race that you've, um, spent time watching? I have. Yes. I've looked at it quite a few times and it's it's one of the most impressive races i've ever seen well listen man uh your races over the weekend are some of the most impressive races from the freshman's ever put down give yourself Thank a you. lot of credit you're on the right path you're doing the right things 
Thank you. Uh, you've got a you got a lot of new fans. I'm one of them, man. I'm I'm excited for your future and your potential. So, uh, like I said, you're in good hands. Good luck to the team and uh, good luck to you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Jordan. Take care, my friend. You too. Have a good one.